Well, hello, folks. Let me mute another channel. I was just catching the Reseller Therapy Show with um, Nevermore Antiques, Rise and Grind Picker, Simo Picker, and the Bearded Picker. So if you guys don't check that out, uh, please do look at each look for each of their channels. I'm gonna mute them real quick. And I don't know if I have anybody in the chat yet, but tonight my thought, and I know it is late, but um, I was kind of holding off to, for the last um, last bit of their show to get started. And you know, I spent some time with the family. We went out. We um, Isabella cooked dinner, and then we went out and played some croquet and. Um, this is how I get back in. I, I, I did the auction. I finally started getting back into it. And I actually picked up a couple lots that had quite a few items in them. I'm going to go ahead and say goodnight to them. But um, yeah, that it was a busy evening. But okay, now I'm back over at mine. I am only streaming on YouTube tonight, so I'm hoping that everything is good, as good and golden. But um, I just, I, I also wanted to go through and pick some of these items. I did not quite pull comps on, so I thought I'd do that as well. But I was pretty excited for at least one of the lots, and. We'll get through and we'll see what happens. So I'm just going to give it a few more minutes to see if anybody jumps in. Cat, if you're out there and you're watching, please let me know if I have any. Just type something in the chat so I can make sure that I'm seeing it. But, um, yeah. So this week, according to my little invoice here, I spent a total of $61.09. Like I said, I think I picked up some some decent items so hey Lonnie how you doing thanks for jumping in um, some of them I'm not quite sure of but you know there's a few items I picked up I, I paid more than ten dollars for believe it or not I don't know um, and some of them I didn't but I, I'll just go through and uh, show some hey what's up TW holiday uh, let's just go through the first thing this I actually paid three dollars for. It's just an A rod, a little promotional um, baseball. It does not. Let me see what it says here. Photo ball um, has batting average, home runs, RBI. Alex Rodriguez. I I pick up these things occasionally, even though it, it's it doesn't. Ha Some of the ones I pick up, I like to pick up ones that might advertise a stadium. But this is back when he played for the Mariners. And it's in great condition. I'm going to probably, I'll just, I, I didn't see any comps for it in particular. And I'll just kind of show back on the back. It has his stats on it at the time. Hey, Tara. Thanks for jumping in. I mean, we're probably talking 10 or $15 for this. I'm thinking, you know, but... Nobody bid on it, so I went ahead and um, minimum bid was $3. This next thing, I, I know you can't always believe everything that's written on a piece of paper, but inside of it, it said, Mother had these at her wedding, 1025-1900. And just to kind of... It almost makes, this I don't think is really anything. I mean, it might have been cloth from a dress or whatever. Who knows? But it did have this vintage, or I guess it'd be antique, if you will. It's just a hanky. And it also had this old fan, which it does have some condition, but if it is truly that old, it, um, I would suspect that it might, but the first blade of it does have, it is broken, and I don't see any markings on it, but I'll carefully pull this open, and that's about as far as I'm going to go, 
but I have no idea what to price this at. But it is painted on the the decoration on it. I'm not a fan guy, but I did just, you know, call me a romantic. I just thought it was kind of cool with the note that was on it. And um, I honestly believe that the person that put this up at the auction house. Hey, what's up, Don? Um, I'm going to go. Like I said, I'm going to do some research on construction of fans to see if the the um the little ring and stuff is to the period and yeah just to kind of give you an idea what it looks like and i want to say this is this is embossed or, or etched in there on both sides there is a little decoration so i have no idea what i'm not a fanboy, lonnie i have no idea what i'm going to make on this Hopefully you'll see soon in a what sold video. Um, just going down. So I paid three dollars and fifty cents for that. I think I'll do pretty well on it. Um, oh, this is this I thought was pretty cool. If you saw my me going through and looking at the auction lot. What's up, cat? I better acknowledge her if she's in the chat. I just thought this was cool. This is a cast iron duck. And just any indication, it does have a Phillips screw. So we know it's not super duper uber old, but I, I still think it's pretty old. The, um, when I actually picked it up and went in there, it looks like it's actually a tea light holder. And it's got a little hoop here. I don't know if you hang that from, I don't know, the ceiling or whatever. I actually paid a little bit more for this. I paid $12 for it. I'm probably going to price this around the 40 to 50 um, price range. Just that's my initial thought on it. I have not been able to find any comps on it. So there are no markings that I could find. But... It does have some weight on it. And like I said, it does have, you know, the Phillips screws on the bottom. I'll have to clean up all the cobwebs and stuff. But I just thought it was, um, I thought it was pretty cool. So, again, that one I did pay $12.54 12 and we'll see what I can do on it. Have you sold any of those, um, Tara? Have you seen one like that? Because I didn't exactly find any comps on it to, um you know, in my initial searches. And I, I grant, I probably only spent about, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes one day trying to find if that. Oh, I know you guys got kind of, some of you got kind of creeped out about this one. When I, when I saw it, when I went through the auction, I've got to identify that this is what, what I found out. This is that, um, it, it, it's solid brass man with deer. It does have some weight. I mean, that probably weighs about three or four. Um, Don, if I, if I rode the ice cream truck in a Speedo fanning people, I would probably get arrested. But the guy reminds me of something, and I just have to figure it out. But the thing that is um, that was really, that really caught my eye is how everything up top is pretty rough as far as their how they sculpted it or you know built the mold and all of a sudden you got this little deer at the bottom that's smooth so again this i'm not sure why it has a flathead screw at the bottom but um i just thought it was cool i i again i paid five dollars and fifty cents for this and I'm thinking that it's, I don't know what the going rate for scrap brass is. There's not much detail in the back. Cat, cat will not let me wear a Speedo, I'm just saying. I said, even in my backyard, mowing the grass. She's like, no. I want to be that guy that was on American Pickers at one time. 
and um, ride around on my mower wearing bright yellow and hot pink Speedos. <laughs> but, okay, well, I went through the ball. That was three $3 I paid for that ball. This one I thought was pretty cool too. I don't know if you guys, if I went through this on the, the auction lot that I did, I do not see any markings on it whatsoever. I'm gonna pull this. I definitely know that it is old. And I'm not saying just because it has um, flathead screws on the bottom that that's why it's old. But um, if you look at it, first of all, we don't see you know, plugs like this nowadays on our electricity. But it's just a really cool, I have not tested this, I guess I could. I am going to attempt to plug this in. I don't see any bare wires yet. Cat, if you see sparks fly in, come down and check me out and make sure I'm okay. Um, I don't even know if that bulb's going to work. Oh, look at that. I did not get electrocuted. But there it is. Let me scoot back a little bit so you can get the whole picture. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. It's got a little pull chain up here. Let me unplug that just in case I got lucky. But again, I mean, you don't see cords like this with the double wire. And... I don't know if this was painted after the fact, but it's got all these little flowers and leaves on it. I don't know what period, what, what would we call this? I mean, this isn't quite Art Deco, is it? <laughs> don't know, please don't make a viral video. Yeah, reseller gets electrocuted live on YouTube. Everybody else would be monetizing from that, not me. But I just thought it was pretty cool. Um, I don't know. I'm probably going to list this high, probably about 60, 70 bucks, and then go from there, but who knows. Okay, he brings up the hot pink and yellow Speedo again. It may be happening. I can only say no for so long, and there's the GoPro. <laughs> so anyway, this lamp here, I actually paid um, $7.50 for. So, uh, you know, if you watch any of my older videos you'll know that i do like to pick up you know weird stuff one you know i i prefer to pick up weird stuff than not okay this is one of my box lots and i'll just show that to you real quick and then i'll set it set it down i paid three dollars for this three dollars and fifty cents this is why i got it it's a one and a half, it's a half gallon liquid U.S. standard Pennsylvania serial number. It has a serial number. Then it says pin rad, 100% pure Pennsylvania motor oil. So it's just this motor oil tin. Um, I, to be honest with you, I'm not even going to clean this up. I think that um, I'll just leave it the way it is. I, I think this item right here will, you know, make my money back for sure, and then probably more well definitely more some of this stuff i don't even know i mean i could at least scrap it for aluminum it's an old uh old paint sprayer it looks like i don't see an age on it it is made in the usa go america um thomas industries inc electric spray it division Sheboygan, Wisconsin, USA, and again, I do not see a year on it, but I'm sure that I'll, I'll do okay. I, I just like all this old crap. Um, a couple old funnels. I mean, I, I mean, this will probably end up being um, the, uh, recycle. 
Oh, hello, Cindy. How you doing? Thanks for coming, checking it out. Oh, look, I got another funnel. I could be the Tin Man. Um, it looks like I have some... I haven't gone through a lot of these boxes, so... Oh, fuck. Let's take let's take my ten man hat off. This these are old canisters, but they don't have anything on them. It is labeled metal pack. Oh, they're metal package Impico. Who knows? So I've got three of these cans. Like I said, I don't think these are worth anything. But I did. It, it did end up coming with um, lids for two of them, so maybe they'll clean up. And these are like these little I, this is going to get tossed but a whole tin full of these um so yeah maybe i will clean those up those will be neat little knickknack canisters i do have lids for no lid for this one um i'm lucky he picks up weird stuff i don't know how to take that cat so anyway there's canisters this is all in that um box of vintage items see photo for what's included that's exactly how it was labeled and i don't know i i could probably get rid of those two tins for um the two with the lids i don't know maybe 10 bucks who knows i thought this is pretty cool it is mounted on wood now this is kind of confusing to me because this this would this will clamp down on a piece of wood. Now what it is is it's a grinder, but how in the hell? I guess this is back in the day when you had your kids helping you all the time. How are you supposed to grind, hand crank this, and grind down whether you're sharp sharpening a blade or you know, a lathe blade, I don't know. But I would I would think you want to use both hands to hold your blade down, but um, I guess, you know, back then you had to be very coordinated to do so. So I have no idea. I don't even know where, I mean, this is going to take uh, research, and this is one of the main reasons I do all the weird crap is because I get into doing the research and find out what items were actually used for uh, before I even find a value on it. So I am not, I guess you can say, I don't always pull comps on the things I find, but I, I know for a fact that um, I will definitely make my $3.50 um, off that box regardless. Okay, what do we got? I'm going to wait for the big box till the end. Oh, this is something I wasn't quite sure about. This is a Woodbury and Company Industrial Supplies Heavy Hardware Steel Portland, Eugene, Oregon. Um, I do know that a lot of industrial stuff goes well. I did pull up comps on industrial. I, I tried to do it for this particular book itself. Uh, what was that? Woodbury and Company. Just to kind of, it, it's not going to pull up this one, but. Um, Hardware. Hey, hello, Sue Ann. Thanks for catching me this late at night. Hardware, steel. Let's just. Oh, I should have put catalog because that's really what it is. Um, but I know the, these catalogs, these industrial catalogs, do do pretty well. I was just going to see if I could pull up any comps I had you guys on here. And I probably, I'm just gonna put in vintage industrial, industrial steel catalog. Just to see what I can find. Um, I'm probably not gonna see anything. I'm probably gonna start this out at about twenty-five to thirty dollars, but. Um, 
I don't know, it does have some condition issues, which when you're taking pictures of these, it does have some mold or something there on the front cover as well as on the, the edges there. But let's see when this was printed. Just the artwork in here. Um, I'm seeing if it has a year. It is catalog F, I believe. Here's a photo of the buildings itself. That top one was their main office, and then they had a branch at 265 8th Avenue in Eugene, and then they have the steel warehouse on Swan Island. I do not see the year, but it's got to be at least, you know, it's got to go back at least to the 50s. Just, just looking at some of the, but basically, I mean, oh, it does have color. Look at that. Does it kind of give you an idea of some of the photos and stuff? I imagine somebody that collects, you know, there's collectors for everything. This might be good for somebody that collects maybe old, um, I mean, it has wheelbarrow, wheelbarrows, there's even a saw, grinders. But anyway, I'm probably going to, like I said, I'm probably going to list this at 25 to 30 and then probably come down from there. But this here, this was $3. Now you might think I'm crazy on this lot. I did not even go in. Well, I went in after I made my initial bid. I'm gonna hold this up. This, this is gonna get crazy, you just heard stuff. I don't know if you can see anything in that box. The thing that got my attention, believe it or not, were these. Can you get, I mean, most of you guys are around this, um, should, rem should know what these are. These are California raisins. <laughs> when I actually bid on it, I, I didn't know how many there were, but between these totes, Might, yes, might think I'm crazy. Between these totes and I've got a bag here. I'm just dropping. I'm dropping California raisins left and right. I kind of wish I could. I looked through here. I was hoping that I had the carrot. Oh, well, that's really nice. I can't tell if that's gum or... Um, that clay stuff, but these are all from 1980, 1987, the year I graduated. And, um, I'll tell you why I, I picked these up. We're going to go over here. Let me set these aside. I mean, I probably got, I don't know, 20, 30, I'd say 30 to 40 easy. Um, a huge collection of them and let's do 1987 oh there's even a christmas one. Oh, what i heard it through the grapevine i'm sure you guys remember those commercials i think it was um i i think they are all unique um let's do i'm going to do a search and i'll share my screen real quick and if this works out just to kind of show you um, some of the solds. Um, I don't know. So I'm showing. I'm showing you. This is. These are sold. Sold, but I know right here. The reason this one here went for two hundred dollars. Just so you know. Um, These carrots, this guy right here is comping out at about um, 60 to $80 on its own. I have this guy right here. I don't have any of the, the broccoli. I don't have any of these here. Everything I have is raisins. So, but um, I didn't I didn't even remember the, the carrot guy and stuff. 
But what I'm going to do is I'm going to sell these as a lot. Come here, it's four for ten dollars. Um, I know some of these lots went a little bit higher, so it's really going to have to be sorting them out and um, going through and figure out. I mean, this guy eight dollars. So um, I'll have to keep y'all posted on this. These are these I will definitely not be doing uh, auction style, but um, I figured for the thirteen dollars I paid for the lot, I would definitely um, break them up into small lots and uh, California. I remember these guys. I believe they are all unique. I'm the oldest person as always. I graduated in 87, born 1969. I am not going to do the calculation because I hate being reminded that of my age. In that lot as well, which I did not even know. I don't, I don't know if you ladies would recognize this. This is a Diligent Duchess Household Toolkit. Now the case itself is in pretty rough condition. It needs to be cleaned up. But um, it is missing the shears over here, which you know they've got. They've got all these cool sparkly handles. Um, Don can add. So diligent Duchess. Oh, I should have made my screen bigger. Let me transition that. Let me move that back over, just to give you a another idea. This, the one screwdriver is having issues staying in, but I'm gonna show that to you one more time. Diligent Dust Duchess Household Tools. Very few comps on this. It, it, actually, the only thing I found on my phone anyway, and we know that sometimes the searches can be different on um, phone versus the computer. Um, household Tools. And let's move that back over. Did I spell it wrong? Probably. That's probably what my... Oh, yeah, I did. What the hell did I put that T in there for? This one is a little bit different. Am I still... Yeah, I'm, on, I, I'm still on souls. This one, it does have two extra slots here. It is missing the... It had the shears, but it was missing the um, the crescent wrench, which I had. Um, this one sold for $65. This may be a long tail item. It may be a quick item. I have no idea. And did you guys notice they brought back where we can look at the sold listings again? I am so thankful for that. If I un unclick the solds... Um, this is not this is not what I have. I don't know where they get the twenty four karat gold unless oh, it does look like the crescent wrench is maybe 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 they made some that were gold plated. I don't know, but um, yeah, twenty four karat gold plated. I had never even seen these. I'm gonna look at this and see. You can supplement your household toolkit with additional tools selected from our complete line of approximately 2,000 tools, the most complete line of hand tools in the world. Perhaps the man in your life might like to start or add to an assortment of standard professional tools for his workshop at home. So, made in the good old state of California. But um, I'm probably going to list this as, uh, I don't know, I want it to go, so I'm, I'm probably going to list it around $40 or $50, but let's just say $50, and I want to, of course, clean it up a little bit, and uh, hopefully, and this is all in this box that cost me $13, and I, do, I am confident that the, the, um, the raisins themselves will definitely make my money back. And they're, they're going to be quick and easy to ship. These, I mean, this is just more stuff. I might just lot these up. Maybe somebody, um, I think they just, 
I'm going to be honest with you. This might even be garbage. I might put it on just to see if anybody wants them because this, this tractor, they are um, plastic and some kind of plastic. I can't tell you. This guy's missing a head. I mean, this, this lot was stuff that people just left at the auction house. I think this is a Hubley kitty toy. I do have a large Hubley metal tractor that I bought at a Goodwill that's still listed, but I'm, um, this one's missing a head and the back wheels. So, um, I don't, I really don't think that there's any money in these. I might try to put them on for five bucks and, and see what I can see if I can get at least that. I guess, I guess at this point with this lot, any penny is going to count. Um, this is from 1978, a Fisher Price Toys um, sc Scarecrow. <laughs> I have no idea. I tell you, sometimes I just buy the craziest shit. I, I don't even know... I don't know if you call that a children's toy. I mean, it looks like they're hanging in the nursery, but how many people today hang um, scarecrows in their nursery? But, um, I mean, I don't even know where to start with that. It's, um, what did I say? What, Fisher Price? This stuff, I, I just opened this up this afternoon. I didn't even go through all of it in detail, so I didn't even... I didn't even know what, um, Rod, yes. Did I miss a, I hear you, Sue Ann. But can you imagine putting a scarecrow, I mean, what, a scarecrow in your, I guess back in the day, I mean, everybody had scarecrow, so it's probably a norm. Scarecrow crib toy. I don't know, even 78. I mean, I think that's pretty late. Oh, it looks like brand new. I guess um, they're selling for, you know, 14, 7. Let's go to sold, see if anybody's at any. There's one that sold for 9 bucks. So, yeah, th this, this is going to be nickel and dime and everything. So, um, we'll see. This, I have no idea. This is a... It, this is what's crazy. I would have thought it might have been Avon or something. This is it's metal. It's got vinyl. It's a a barrel. This actually turns. I I haven't put liquid in it to see if it actually dispenses this way. It's got. I mean, it's it's, it's glass on the interior, but. It doesn't smell. I, I bought it at Hello Susie Susie. I bought it at a local auction. I paid thirteen fifty for this box or thirteen dollars for this box. So I don't know. Wanted me to tell you that you're small. Oh, thank you. There. Um, but let me show that again. Like I said, this uh, this turns. Like I said, I, it's almost like it's a cologne bottle. It did have. It does have glass in there. This is vinyl all the way around, the, the, the faux wood. And I wanna say um, the back is probably is metal. I don't know about the rings, but it is held together with these little Phillips head screws. But um, I don't even know. It, uh, it, that might be one of those things that, you know, I might try, get lucky. But I'm just showing you the, the crap that, that was in this lot. Here's for all the camel collectors, camel powered. This is some kind of promo. I don't know the age. It probably had something that came in here. And um, there is a, what, 10 packages of matches from the day. Sea, a mon sea monster, life in the fast lane. I don't know what the rest of them say, but I know that there are. Um, tobacco collectors out there, you know, maybe 10 bucks. But I, I love anything advertising, even if it doesn't make me a ton of money. I just go into this box because, like I said, I got it, um, and 
he, Avon was huge back in the day. Let me turn his head. This one I needed a little bit of repair. A little, I got some hot glue guns back there. It's a little Kobe Bryant bobblehead. Let's see if it has a year on it. 2001 Upper Deck. I mean, these things are so much um, Upper Deck. You know, all baseball card related stuff in that time period was pretty much uh, mass produced. So I'm thinking if I can put uh, put the glue back on it, uh, you know, just to hold that, because that's all it is on the inside there. You probably won't be able to see that. But um, I just need to put a dab of hot glue in there, stick it back in there, and that way his head doesn't fall fall off. Kobe Bryant, y'all. Um, as cool as this looks, this little dater, we're probably talking five to ten dollars for it. I, I would say um, comps on are probably running about eight or nine bucks. It's an American um, numbering machine, uh, and like I said, you know, I I do really try to to bring my profit margins up. But I'm looking at this as over overall. These are all going to be easy things, fast things to ship, and I I just find it interesting to see what I'm going to get. This next one is a Boss Chromatic Tuner, TU-12H. I have no idea. I mean, I, it, it, is that going to be worth anything? Like I said, I'm just this is the first time I've sat down at a computer looking. Boss Chromatic Tuner, TU-12H. And let's just look at it real quick. Oh, look at that. Let's see. Okay, that's those are sold. So there's one that sold for twenty nine ninety five. Another one that sold for thirty eight ninety nine, twenty four ninety nine, nineteen ninety nine, and this is the one I have. So you know, I, I ended up being pretty lucky on this. Of course, there's one that went at auction at nine dollars. One that went at five dollars, ten dollars. So auction is definitely not. Use E6000 glue so the head doesn't fall off on shipping. I want to show you what this looks like. So this looks like on the low end, $25. Well, I list it at a buy it now. And um, it, it probably goes, you know, it looks like it's going as, as high as 40. So I'll just have to put a battery in there. Let's look at the battery compartment. Everything is clean. I mean, it doesn't even look like that thing's been, been, um, been used so I'll put I'll drop a nine volt in there and test it out so right here I mean this doubled my money already this one item not counting everything else and the case is the, the case is in great condition and that a lot of this stuff is it will go in a bubble bubble um, a bubble mailer this they're old poker chips I mean, they're not anything. I mean, they don't have any. They're not like from a casino or anything. So, and I don't see any markings on them. So again, I'm thinking maybe ten, ten to fifteen dollars for these poker chips. It does have a dealer chip on it, which is kind of cool. But I, I don't know anything about them. I, I know I've looked up to buy poker chips. They do have some weight to them. I mean, this one right here. This bag, I mean, I'm guessing probably two pounds. 27 ounces, I guess. So I was a little bit off. So, I mean, again, maybe 10, 15 bucks if I'm lucky. Oh, thank you. That is here. Did I, were you guys able to see the tuner? I, I, I did. Um, sorry about that. I keep forgetting to switch back over. We'll just go back over this so you get a better picture of it. This is running, uh, comps are running 25 to $40 on it. And and again, I, I showed it, it, it is super clean, so I doubt it was um, hardly used. These are the poker chips. You know, the only thing, it, it does have a dealer chip in there or a de dealer marker. And they're pretty heavy, so I'm thinking... Um, I found a set of four Fiesta Wear mugs at Goodwill on Wednesday. They're light yellow, never used. 
yeah, that, that tuner is better than the ones I have found before. Is that what it's called? A button? So dealer button. It's all about smalls tonight. Some of the... I don't even know where to go next. I mean, these I may just put back in the auction. I don't know why these didn't... I, I mean, this lot was called Miscellaneous Box. Contains California Raisin Collectibles, Cowgirl Boot Lamp, Action Figures, Fishing Items, Pins, Plain Collectibles... But I, this is going to be the first time I've actually tried to sell anything as far as fishing on eBay. But I'm just going to lot these up and go with them. I mean, I, I used to fish quite a bit. I could see you as wearing a um, vest and a white shirt, black vest, dealing at the local casino. So anyway, I'm just going to hold these up. These need to be um, detangled. It's, it's a, oh yeah, standard rooster tail. Anybody that, it, it, a lot of people with trout fish use rooster tails. Um, Red Eye Wiggler from Rochester, New York. And, and here we are all the way over in Idaho. If any of you guys are fishing collectors, this is pretty standard. This one right here. So there, there's no age to that. This one here, this one looks like it might have some age to it. But I don't know. Some of these I've fished, I've fished with before. I've never used an Esper Cedar Repeater. Cedar Lake Camp. That might have some nostalgic, um, nostalgia to it. This isn't super old, I know that. But I, I've got a whole, um, like it's a, the red, <laughs> I think you meant the red-eyed wiggler. I, I, I know, I've, I've fished with those before. <laughs> You're so funny. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh. Okay, it's not red-eyed, but. I've never seen one. I've never seen anything quite like that, to be honest with you. I was trying to get through all the fishing stuff. Oh, there's a there's a couple of bobbers in there, but we're not gonna go too in depth with that. I need to find. Look at that. When you say you need to find something to put all this stuff in, a baggie appears. Um. Let's go to cowgirl lamp. Should we test this one out too? I'm all for me thinks you're on to something. That thing is floppy. That's what she said. I'm actually holding on to it this time. Let's see if the bulb actually works. Oh, look at that. It does work. No markings on it whatsoever. I guess the... But it's some kind of metal. But I thought that was kind of cool. Alright guys, I need a step-by-step -step guide on how to prep books for Amazon. Do you have suggestions on someone I can watch? I have watched every day Posh Vid, but it's time. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I do all of my books uh, merch fulfilled. And um, I don't I don't send anything in FBA. If you want to talk FBA, and I don't even know if he's he does many books or has ever done many books, but um, Scott, um, the bearded picker, he's our resident uh, FBA king. So, but again, as far as books are concerned, just because when I started doing FBA I, or merch fulfilled. The fees weren't as bad on books, so with a price with a cost of media mail shipping a book, it was less than the allowance for shipping. I think you get three ninety nine allowance for um, shipping. I I just figured I'd pocket that extra couple cents and consider it fee for packing. Um, this is a Frankoma. 
1991. I mean, I don't know. Would you drink coffee out of that? It's got a little handle. I don't know if I would drink coffee out of it, but it's just a little ceramic boot. We'll call it a coffee cup or a shot glass with a handle. A really big shot glass. A lot of this stuff, like I said, I, I'll probably be lucky to get 10 bucks out of. But some of it, I, some of it I'm definitely going to get more. I don't even know if this was part of a, some bookends at one time. It's this little brass teddy bear, not to be fooled because it is filled with plaster. Most of this stuff is probably going to go in a padded flat rate, or I'll check and see what um, cubic shipping or cubic rate is going to do. I'm guessing this is, this has um, Texas Centennial. And it, it's, it's like a pot metal. And it says um, 1836 and 1936. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with this being period uh, around 1936 if they're advertising the Centennial. Um, I don't know who would want to repro this. So I'm going to go with, yeah. And we know Texas, how proud they are of their state. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that I, I'm, I can do okay with that. This looks like a, um, this is pop, pop metal again, I would say. It almost looks like it's, I don't know, I don't know if it's painted that color, but when you look at the bottom. Hey, good night, Lonnie. Thanks for stopping in. But this is like, this looks like the um, Oklahoma Cowboys guy standing in front of a little pond. I don't know if you consider that a coin, coin tray or an ashtray. It almost looks like an ashtray the way the, the rocks are sitting there. It looks like, you know, put your cigar or whatever. But I thought that that was pretty cool. I mean, again, a lot of this stuff is probably going to go for, be listed for 10 to $15 plus shipping. Um... More randomness. I swear we're almost to the bottom of this freaking box. Something more modern. Monster Jam. This is um, Wolverine versus Captain America. The big trucks. This one I think is probably going for about 15 to 20. From what I could tell earlier. There are different versions of it. Uh, this is another modern... Uh, Hot Wheels Fantasy, the dream cars behind the classic Hot Wheels vehicles. Just another book with a little car in it. I mean, we're probably talking five to ten dollars for that. Nothing overly spectacular. I I do have a bunch of these coins. That they're not actually coins; they're like coin slash tokens. But it actually has all the a lot of the presidents on it, and I think these are probably. I can't remember when they were, these were made, but there's a whole little baggie of them. Um, I think uh, he does. He's a uh, he sells mentor time. But you know, there's a whole stack of these. I, I don't know if I can grab all these. These will go in a, in a lot, and I, I've got a couple extra that I actually started falling out of the box. But, um, just to give you an idea. And these basically have the, the president and then facts about it. So here is Warren Harding, 1921 to 1923, 29th president of the United States. And born November 2nd, 1865. Um, first name were published, elected to the presidency. Slogan was back to <coughs> back to normalcy first pr president to speak on the radio died in 1923 anyway these will probably be lotted up and i'm probably going to go for um 15 20 price range on this line them all up and send them out the problem is is um 
the amount of money that some of these people are charging for mentor time. Um, I, I consider my, my time valuable, but even in the career field that I'm in, I don't get paid $75 or whatever the, the price is per hour. But th that's just me. Most of this stuff, I, I think down at the bottom, I don't know what a price on this is. This looks like a little Alexander. It's a little Tin Man, Tin Man doll. Um, again, this is pretty much. This will probably get donated. It's a little kid clown, you know, porcelain, ceramic, made in Taiwan. Definitely no, no value there. I'm going to be honest with you. I've got a couple of um, Pez dispensers in here. The whistle is kind of crazy. I've heard it on the Pez dispensers. If you want to look for them, look for the ones without the feet. But... Um, this go this will go to the donate pile. It's a it's a deer without missing an antler, but I've never seen the whistle before, so that might be kind of something just to look into. Um, tobacco cans, I I tend to steer away from those. That's probably why they're in this lot. This was very interesting, and I don't know if this is ho homemade. It's a frog, and I know you're thinking I'm like, you think I'm crazy. It almost looks ho homemade. It's a whistle, but I I thought that was kind of cool. Again, I mean, it literally looks like somebody handmade this thing, but I don't know if there's going to be a market for that or not. We've got a bunch of these uh, airplanes. This is, um, oh, these are Matchbox. Matchbox airplanes. I've, these are these will go in a lot. Maybe I can get, um, again, I'm just going to say 10, 10 to $15. There's like a jet, uh, uh, Lafanza. Fertility frog whistle to impregnate your pet ferret. Well, I am not getting a pet ferret just in case I actually blow that at the wrong time. Um, a Tootsie toy. I don't even think I've heard of that brand. Matchbox helicopter. This is not in the greatest. The decals are all off of that. Those, those are all going lot for probably, I don't know, maybe I can get 10 bucks for the lot. I've got a few more in here. I might put them on for 15 best offer. There's another Tootsie toy. I've why have I never heard of Tootsie toy? But I'll probably lock all these planes up just so I can get them all. You know, one one buyer, one purchase. Just lock all these airplanes. Somebody has a kid that wants a bunch. Well, okay, these little ones might be a little um, far stretch. That, those are all the little ones are all called Tootsie Toy. Have you guys ever heard of Tootsie Toy? That's what I feel like I bought was a junk drawer lot. I tell you what, it's fun to go through. If you've never bought a junk drawer lot, this is freaking awesome. Another little plane. I mean. There's probably 10 or 15 planes there, at least. Here's another matchbox. So I'll probably drop them. Um, I've never even considered selling a junk drawer lot, but I might. I, I did look at some of them. I just um, never considered doing them. Here is a 2010 Pebble Beach uh, Spyglass Hill Del Monte. So some kind of um, U.S. Open badge. I'm 
Then I got all these random pins. Go Bananas, MHS, um, Orange County Transit District. Come Easy come, easy go. New Zealand Tiki. I mean, do, do you guys ever sell any... Um, I love hope view. Clean air ride share. What's this one? Dunk em, Norseman. I love a, I heart a clean downy. We are doing it together. What the hell does that even mean? Was it? What was the other Duncan one? Oh, funny. We had, we had Duncan Norseman. Now we have similar graphics. Hang them high marauders. Some of the Tootsie airplanes are worth a little bit. I will definitely check that out. Oh, here you go. The American Dream. Buy now. Now it's probably just getting totally boring. And then I have a couple key changes. One for Canada. Um, Banff, Canada. I don't know. These are these will probably be donate. I just don't. These are new with tags. Originally $4.99. At your local Banff, Canada gifts gift shop okay it is a Molson Canadian lighter originally $6.99 for that I don't even know what I want to do with that because I don't think I can ship that California State Championship Balboa Bay. Oh, look at that. 1986 championship, Chile championship. Bad. I had like five looking little Lexi cars. I thought they were junk at auction. They went for $51 loaded up. Holy crap, Cindy. I am definitely going to give that a shot. It's empty, but a little bear aspirin, children's aspirin. Um, nothing really spectacular here. How do I? Oh, it's a bottle opener. It's got this little tab here, and that is so you can get your corkscrew out. But it's not advertising, so I don't, you know, I, I do like my advertising, so. There's like bits and pieces. 2002 Mario Kart, dude. That would probably be worth at least 8 to 10 bucks. I do have to... Uh, this is... This might have to go to Isabella. It's not the modern day Flash, but it is the Flash. Her and I have been trying to catch up on the um, this last season. We are big Flash fans. So I may have to give that to her. She she loves the series. I got her hooked on, on it. Um, I'm trying to read this so... I can't even... Something international. I don't even know. I don't even recognize this character right here. It almost makes me wonder if it's related to, um, yeah, I, I've been watching, watching at least this season. I let her watch all the old, the uh, past seasons of Flash, and then when they released this recent season, I, um, I started watching it with her. So we're planning on actually watching an episode tonight. I want to say these might be Power Rangers. I don't know. that The seat just doesn't look right to me. So overall, this looks more like a Power Ranger, but I don't, uh, 99 Bandai, so I believe this one is definitely Power Ranger, 
and are, is there money in Power Rangers? I know there's a huge following, um, but I do not, I don't know about these figures. So, you know, I, it, it might be time for me to go into the two or three dollar, four dollar, five dollar items just to unload this box. I definitely think there's an old Volkswagen Kinsmart 132 scale. Not in the best condition. Well, I guess it's okay. All the decals are there. But a, a lot of this stuff, it, it's going to... I may look into the um, whole... Uh, junk drawer lot. I don't even know how you would light... Have y'all seen lighters? Like I know I've seen these before, but how in the heck... Is this like a... I almost wonder if this is like a hand, some kind of um, warmer. It's a hand warmer. But how does it work? I have never, ever. I wonder if you, it's, uh, um, hey, what's up, John? If this is a hand warmer. And the thing that is, um, interesting about it i've never i've never used one. Oh, i wonder if there's a little steel there i wonder if there's if there's a if there if there was flint there at one time or whatever it does hold fluid And I, I imagine you light, and it probably glows a little bit there. Anyway, this is probably worth absolutely nothing, but I'm going to enjoy doing the research to see how it actually works. Um, the, the rest of the stuff I have down here, I have... You know, there's a little Power Ranger little camera. I did look at it. It's like one of those viewfinders. But the, the thing is, is it doesn't, I don't know if it was supposed to have had more than one picture, but it's only cycling through once. So, um, it, it's, this is probably junk drawer stuff. Then they did throw in some reels. There's an old, um, Compact 110 ball bearing SL. I don't even I don't even recognize the brand on that. Are there vintage real collectors out there? This has some pretty smooth action. It's a small light action Magnum drag system line capacity. It's a Pro Staff. Oh, it's Zebco. I do recognize Zebco. This is an old fly reel. Made by um, H.I. Utica, New York. Stock Farm, Hamilton, Montana. I mean, what is this? I mean, I have not a clue. I do think that these... I might have to keep some of these reels. Just because, uh, but this is small. This one he's oiled up pretty bad, though. But look how small this thing is. This is this would be great for crappie. Um, gosh, I don't even know. It's Seiko, oh, Daiwa, Daiwa mini cast. Oh, and then there's more of the. Oh, that's a, another Matchbox plane. But I am going to take your suggestion. I mean, I, I don't know. You said Tootsie, Tootsie Toys Airplanes. I'm going to look those up real quick. I've got a huge mess going here. Tootsie Toy Airplane. I'm just going to pull that up just to see if there, if I do. Are these sold? Oh, I guess you need to know the year and stuff. I guess, man, some of those do go 
pretty good. I mean, I don't know. Are, are these modern? Um, Tootsie Toy. I'd, I'd, I'm going to have to look a little closer into it. But I, I like your idea. That that might definitely be a um, lot up and, and put it to auction and see what happens. I mean, I don't have that one. I want that one that sold for $70. And I wouldn't even know how to begin to tell the year. I'm, looks like I am going to be doing some research before I lot those up. There really wasn't anything else spectacular in there. I know I went through some of this stuff might have bored you a little bit. Oh, look at that. A giant spoon made by, it's a daredevil, Detroit, USA. I know absolutely nothing about tackle except for how to use it. I do have this um, nine, or 2008 Lego... I did not even recognize that as Lego. Maybe it can't wait. It was from the movie. Because it's pretty large. But it does have the Lego um, label on it. So. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I do have. I guess I. Donate. Or I guess I can put that on the front of the house. So I can start actually hanging a flag. This is. Um. Three Forks area, Lewis and Clark Festival of Discovery Bicentennial Commemorative Coin, Louisiana Purchase. I don't know, but a lot of this stuff. I mean, you're not. We're not going to see a ton of money. Um, Tap Boy Vaughn's Tap Boy. It looks like it's missing the corkscrew. Terrible condition. That's that's that'll be donated. To them. But um, yeah, I mean, all of that stuff we just went through, and for what the last half hour, total of. $13 plus buyer's premium. Of course, just to remind you guys, if you guys are doing sourcing, oh, sorry about that. I, I, I will get better, Susie. Um, gonna post a junk, junk drawer challenge in the Resale Mafia Facebook group. I will, um, and I just so you know, I didn't overlook your reels can be good money. Reels can be good money, but reels can be bad money too. You really got to know what you're, well, I guess it's just like anything. And I'm just not real super versed in reels. So it's going to have to definitely be one of those things I start researching. This rod screen is stuck. Let me go over and look at the... Why does my internet just start crapping out at this time? I think I might have to lower my... Excuse me, I'm gonna to go to my channel just to see what's what everybody's seeing. Okay, am I still stuck? Because I'm sure I'm still moving. Maybe try to refresh. Am I stuck for everybody else? I just checked my my stream and it seems to be doing okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So, you know, I, I'll tell you what, I, I love this lot. I mean, um, even though there's not a, like what, what some people would call home runs there, I think I'm definitely going to, um, I would almost venture to say I will at least, um, about $13. Easily, I think I could pull a hundred dollars. I that's what I'm thinking, and I'm, I'm thinking probably closer to um, maybe closer to 120 to 150. But you know, I it's 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 my experiment. A lot of these things, I don't know what they're going to bring. I can only see what um, what the comps are telling me, and then you know, price into sale. And yeah, I do understand that a lot of the interest that the, the 
Otter stuff might sit for a while, but I, I'll definitely uh, be making my money. But if you guys um, ever do, think about doing online auctions if you haven't before. They're a lot of fun. Just make sure that you keep in mind buyer's premium and taxes as you're bidding. Um, total this week, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lots for a total of $51.00. And on top of that, I had 13% buyer's premium because I, I used my card. So that was $6.63. And then Idaho sales tax, which is 6%, $3.46. So $51 in bids equated to $61.09 in what, in what I actually paid for. So always keep that in mind. That, But I, I think I did really good this week um, out of the $61.00. If I can get close to what I've, what I have estimated on things, um, I think, I don't know. I, I, I hate to even guess. I mean, the, the lamp and the, the cast iron duck, I think for sure are going to put me in the black and, uh, then everything on, on top of that is just butter. Sue Ann paid $25 of premium for my first online auction local lot. I've got one thing left to sell, and I'm probably going to wind up doubling my money. I mean, there he is. The thing about these auctions, and, and I will tell you, you have to be careful because I have run here locally, I've run into the issue of people that sell on Amazon. They, um, they try to unload their returns or the stuff that's not good enough to sell on eBay, they try to unload them on your local auctions. If you're going to spend a substantial amount of money, go in and preview. I mean, hopefully you have the online site or the, uh, the location for your local online auctions are um, close enough where you can go in and, and preview. This lot, the, I, I did go in and look because I, I was really just interested in the the raisins, <laughs> as crazy as that sounds, I'm really hoping to get about um, forty dollars a minimum on those. And that basically, Don, there, there's at a auction house. The way they make money is number one: if you take something to the auction to sell, you have to pay a percentage of the selling price. Here locally, it's on a tier system, so zero to fifty percent or zero to fifty dollars might be um, ten percent, or or no, it's like forty percent. I I don't know. It's 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 pretty high, but fifty fifty to a hundred, it's going to be another percentage. Hundred to five hundred, it's going to be a percentage. So you're going to pay the highest percentage for the zero to fifty, and so on. Um, now, as a buyer at the auction, the auction house is also making the buyer's premium. And that's going to differ, differ from auction house to auction house. But uh, no, this is, on, this is going through a local auctioneer. Um, you're going to pay, um, and that's what, that's what ours is, is Green Thrifty Life is. Ours is 13% if you're paying by card and 10% if you're paying cash so i paid 51 dollars for all these items that i paid but on top of sales tax i had to pay the 13 percent which equated to six dollars and 63 cents that green thrifty life is is your 13 percent is that the buyer's premium or the seller's premium or the i, I don't know what they call it. they might I, they might pay, call it a commission but um if you're selling things at the lo local auction, it, it may be, you know, it, it differs. Yeah, if you're actually the seller at the auction, it might run a little bit different. They may run a, they may run a flat rate, regardless as how much the item sells for. But I know here it's, it's on a, it's a t kind of a tiered system. But um, yeah, just keep that in mind if you're sourcing and you know i do recommend if even if you're not spending top dollar um it, it really kind of sucks when you go buy something and you get you know sight unseen you see the pictures 
and the pictures may not have reflected quality issues and you go to pick it up and you're like oh there goes half my profits or all my profits because I didn't go in and take a look and make sure that the quality was quite there. So if you do have, if you do have a chance, I mean, I've, I've been doing it for, I would say about 10 to 12 months going through the local auction houses. And I, I can kind of have a, a decent idea as to what, what I'm willing to judge on the photo, the photos that they provide. Um, and what I really need to go and take a look at. Grew up in an auction house, but my grandpa called it something else. I think it was commissioned and my grandpa took away more than 50%, I think. That sounds probably about right. I mean, I think that here at this particular auction house, it starts out at 40%. So let's say I sold something for $500 at the auction house. The first $50 might be, um, let's just say 40 percent the and then 50 to 100 is say 30 and then 100 to 500 might be um 20 percent so it's um uh, it's all yep learn that lesson today but the auction was too far to go to the preview and that that's really that's where the risk is when you're doing these online auctions is i will tell you that the photos are not near the quality that you would expect to see on an online site like eBay, Amazon. And I know they're just local and they're doing the best they can, but, um, it, 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 it does, it, 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 if you can go in and, um, look at the items, it, it is, you will benefit from it and it'll, it'll reduce your risk. All the, one, all the ones around here are different on how they do their fees for sellers. It's different with the states versus just bringing stuff in anywhere from 35 to 60%. So there you go. I mean, people want to complain about eBay fees. <coughs> Try selling your stuff local. Now, I'm considering taking stuff to, to, to sell, knowing that I'm going to have to pay higher fees, but you're almost guaranteed to get to dump it for something. You know, if you're sitting on stuff and you're wondering what the hell you're going to do with it because it was a bad decision in the first place, it's, you can either donate it or take it to the auction house and hope that you can sell it and, and, and uh, recoup some of, some of what you spent in the first place. Mostly bought estate and auction items. I don't think he did a ton of commission stuff. Green through like my living room looks like a bookstore exploded. Hits the Amazon question earlier. It's a bad situation that I know will make me a ton of money, but it's a lot. And you know what? The that's the thing with books. Most of the books are going to be long tail. I um, I I even looked at it that on uh, this week. There's another auction. It's a it looks like a farm auction, but they have bookshelves of books and. I thought about buying some, but then I thought, where the hell am I going to put it and, and be in the same situation? I know there's a lot of money in books, but um, it's they take up a lot of space. They weigh a lot. Um, and then, you know, you get that many books because you can buy them for a dime a dozen. And then you, you, you have to make sure that you have, you know, trying to get some sort of inventory system set up if you're doing them yourself, if you're shipping yourself, and then all of a sudden you can't find a book, and then you have to take a ding because you didn't ship it, you couldn't ship it out because you couldn't find it, and then all of a sudden a week later you find it, and um, then you kick yourself because you, you know, you got to take a ding for nothing. But yeah, that's how I actually got started. I bought, uh, when Hastings went out of business, I, Kat and I just happened to be at the store during their last hours and they were sell, they sold a, you know, it was like $10 for a huge industrial size garbage bag of, for books. And, you know, that, that's how I really got started. You know, and I, I, I listed them all on Amazon doing Merch Fulfilled. And that was before they increased the the fees on books. But, you know, again, the reason I do 
I do merch fulfilled, you know, it's, it's like, yeah, I could probably boost the boost my sales doing FBA, but then they started playing around with all the fees, the storage fees and all that. And knowing books can be long tail. I figured it wasn't costing me anything, but the fees to list them in my, the space that I have in my basement here. And, um, that's, that's why I do all mine merch fulfilled versus FBA. I have, I don't know why, and I know Scott will t keeps telling me to put on my big girl pants, but I just haven't, I have not explored doing my first FBA shipment, but I don't know. I will eventually try it out and see, see what happens. Anyway, I have been on for quite a while tonight. I do appreciate y'all sticking with, um, Sticking with me through my extended auction haul. I was pretty excited to go through that last box just because it's just just the crazy stuff that was in it. Um, but I, I think I did pretty good on all my items. At least, you know, that's in my head now. I'm excited to get them listed. And typically, once I, you know, I, I really try to hit the listing when I actually start sourcing things versus I, I get kind of lazy when I'm just sourcing from a pile in in the other room anyway that's it for tonight if anybody's catching this later um you know i i'm always looking for new subscribers and i'd love to have you part of the community um green thrifty life john maserati uh, i know lonnie had already left uh who else um sue ann susie susie uh if i cat of course john nevermore cindy rosen and everybody else that joined that I did not, um, that I did not catch, I do appreciate you guys coming in and chatting with me this evening. But um, thanks again, Don. I will consider doing the the junk drawer challenge. I could I could probably find a ton of stuff to make multiple junk drawers. But um, I will I will I will jump in the Facebook and if you guys if you've already pe posted it there. Uh, I'll go check it out later. But anyway, that's it for tonight. Um, TW Holiday, there is... Um, they're doing... I think Don was going to post it in the Reseller Mafia Facebook group. So if, if you... Um, there's multiple Facebook groups. If you, if you, if you want to know some decent Facebook groups, um, that one... I have one that's just starting up. I mean, I've had it going for six, eight months. But it's uh, when by doing reselling, so it's it's it, that one's still fairly small, uh, just because I just started recently having people jump in. I mean, I've had, had it going for about six to eight months, but um, I my favorite one of probably of all is um, this week in reselling with um, garage flips and uh, Cincinnati Picker. Love that group. It, it's they're pretty down to earth. Everybody's open and willing to share. But um, there's just know when you're out there joining these groups, some of them are going to be filled with negativity. Try to find the positive ones, and you know that's the best way to stay motivated and keep in touch with this with the reselling community is finding positive groups to be part of. Anyway, that is it for tonight. We'll catch y'all later. Peace out.